Hello, this is Dr. Crystal Ruff, and this is the second in the video series, Writing Your Thesis, What You Should Know. Seriously, this will save you weeks of work. So we've talked a little bit about the background and general tips for writing your thesis. Next, we're going to move on to headings and templates. Now, the heading styles can be found under the home section of your Word under styles. And that's what these things are here, and you can click on them and see that they change We'll talk about this later and I'll tell you what this means. Using heading styles will give you, number one, a very succinct outline and we'll discuss how to do that. Number two, crystalline organization, so all of your headings and subheadings will be the same style. And it'll give you an easy way if, for example, I know mine did. I had a very pedantic supervisor who said, no, I want this font, this style, this length, this size this shape and using heading styles will allow you to do this. Number one, using the heading styles. We've talked about where they are, what do they do? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by creating, putting this next video with uh, control enter that we learned in our first video onto a new page. Say you have a paragraph. Words, words, words. Let's highlight that. Copy. So you've got a paragraph. And let's say that this is your paragraph one. One fruit. And in this introduction, you want to talk about the different types of fruits. What you can do, I'm going to make more words. In this subsection, you want to talk about bananas. And in this subsection, you'd like to talk about apples. However, there are two types of apples in your subsection. So here's more words. There's red apples. And there's green apples. Now, you can see already that this is, this is quite a substantial document. It's hard to navigate. If you had 17 pages of this, it would be very difficult to get around. So this is where we use our heading styles. What this means, so each of these styles, you can scroll down. Hold on, let's make them bigger. You can scroll to use for different, different aspects. So you can have your title slide. Heading 1, it's in ascending order of importance, so heading 1 will be the most important, 2 is, is the middle important, 3 is least. For example, we take care of paragraph 1, fruits. So it is the, the mother of our, of our paragraph, so it's going to be heading 1. Bananas are a type of fruit, so that's going to be under the subset of fruits, heading style 2. Apples are also a subset. However, red apples would be heading style 3 because it belongs to apples, and you get this. You get this point. Okay. We have our heading styles. Next, we're going to talk about the great option that I discovered while writing my thesis. No one taught this to me, but it's the greatest thing in the world. Update heading to match selection. Say you don't want your writing to be in blue. For example, I would like this to be, you know, Times New Roman. 14, let's say, yeah, I want a Times New Roman 14 just for ease. I want it black and underlined. I want all of my heading style one to be underlined. All I do is make this how I want it. Right click, I'm right clicking here on the heading style that I want. Update heading one to match selection. And automatically, everything you see, I've used the heading styles in this document. Everything that you use as a heading one is now changed automatically. So if your boss says, no, you know, I don't like that in font 14, so make it, make it go to font 12. Update heading style to match selection. Everything in your document will turn. So I want it actually, I want it 14, I want it bigger. You can also go in separately and modify your heading style. So if you click on it, come here. I'm sorry, I right-clicked I right it. Modify. 
it takes you into a whole big menu where you can choose the font. You can go into format in this bottom corner. And depending on whether you want numbering, like subsection 1, 1A, 1B, and it will automatically number for you. So I think in my thesis, each chapter was numbered. So chapter 1 dot a dot b dot 3, chapter 1 dot 2, 1 dot 1, 1 dot 2, 1 dot 3, etc. That's what I used. Use whatever works for you, but that's what I used. You can change the formatting here. Okay, cancel that. So I've changed my heading style to that. Heading style 2, I want to be indent. I like it that color. Or update heading 2 to match selection. And then red apples, I'm going to put as, I want it small and bold. And I know when I wrote my thesis, I don't know what, uh, I want it black color too. I don't know what your school stipulates. Mine didn't have a stipulation for the, the subheading, the font. And I could just make those whatever I wanted. Talk to your school and, and see what works for you. So we've got our heading styles. Great, that's wonderful, but what does, what does this do for you? Next, we're going to talk about the document map. So we've talked about update heading to match selection. Next, we're going to go to document map. So this is where this all comes together. You'll see a nice flow in your thesis if you use it. So under document map, you want to go to, and you'll want to write this down, you'll want to go to view. It's under the view menu. And you see here up in the corner, document map. So I'm going to click on that. And on the left hand of my page goes all of the things that I have labeled. So in my, in my heading one style, copyright, crystal rough, the title's not on there. Everything that I have used in this document as heading one is now listed in ascending order, I guess. And, and this will be your chapter. So chapter one, this. Chapter two, this. And then in paragraph one, you can see you can open or close things. So paragraph one, we're talking about fruits. Right here is your, your heading style one. Within fruits, there are bananas and apples that we've talked about. And, and this is actually, sorry, I'm, I'm going on a tangent right here because this is very good when you use a document map. You can actually click. Right now, I'm just going to left click here. And it will take you to the section that you want. Chapter one first introduction, I can click here and it'll take me right there. If I want to look at apples, I can click on apples and it'll take me to that. And I can expand it or, or de-expand it, I don't know, implode it, <laughs> to, to get to the different subsections that I want. So say you have a 30 or 40 page introduction that's really long and you don't want to scroll through the whole thing, you can close all of your smaller subsections. So you get only the heading style 1. You can open them up to see your heading style 2. And furthermore, you can find each subsection and click on each individual subsection very quickly using your document map to navigate. So this is really, I found it very, very good, you know, when I'm writing about something or if you have to go back to a certain section. Document map is very key. All right, so to video 2, heading the template, because that was very easy, just clicked on it. Uh, so we've talked about document map and how to use that. Save template. So this is this is very important. Some schools already have a template that they'd like you to use, but if not, the easy way to save all of your headings in one style is uh, go to your your file your office button, click on it, save as Word template, and what it does is it saves all of your styles. So writing your thesis, what you should know. I'm going to save it. Yeah, I'll just save it here. Managing long documents. So that's where this is. So this is your this is your template. You can save it. You can change it how you want. Save your template. And when you go to apply it to a document, this is online. You can Google it. You basically would just click apply. I think you'd have to go under Word options and you say apply um, apply this template. But this way, you can have the same template for all of your chapters, so they're all the same. So every single structure within your thesis is completely crystalline. So applying templates, you can Google, because that's not something we're going to cover today in five minutes. But um, it's, 
a really, really simple way to organize your essay. And then if someone says to you, oh, you know, paragraph fruit, I want it to go green apples and red apples, all you do is find your green apples, control copy, because we know our shortcut, or control X even, you can cut it. And cut, the cut option will copy and cut as well. Red apples, green apples. I want it to be green apples, red apples, so I paste it in. Easy. Okay. The next thing we're going to talk about under our video two, how to use a template. So we've talked about saving the template, creating a table of contents and figures. So I told you in the first video, this is really easy. Don't do it manually. It's very, very simple. What you're going to do, so on your first page, I think, uh, title page declaration, table of contents goes first. All right. So we're going to create a table of contents in this document. I'm going to do it, I guess, right before my paragraph of fruits table. And so maybe what I'll do is I'll create a new page for my table of contents. And it's going to have table of contents. Actually, you know what? Oh, I'm going to give it how to spell one because I like it. Okay. All right, table of contents. And literally, this is all you have to do on the last day. So this is what you do. Don't create a table of contents for each individual chapter. Once you put it together in one document, that's when you create all of your tables. So the last week or so. And make sure you plan for you know a week for putting things just together, a day for assembling it, and then a following day for printing. You'll thank me for this later. OK, so table of contents, control enter, it gets its own page. And all you want to do is where you want it to go, uh, references. So under references, you'll see table of content. Um, we'll talk about inserting citations and captions as well, which are very good. We'll do that later. But insert table of contents. You can specify your style automatically. You can also create a manual table where you say, I want it to be a certain way. And it automatically puts it. Let me move this so you can see automatically puts it in. So page number, the title, and it, it sorts by the, the levels. So chapter to, oh, so it didn't automatically, hold on, I'm going to, so this is where you manually type in, but I'm sorry because there's a much easier way, so I'm going to undo that with control Z, and I'm going to insert an automatic table. There we go, sorry about that. There we go, so now it's sorted by, by what my titles are automatically. So video one, two, table of contents, paragraph, fruits, blah, blah, blah. And it sorts it by the subheadings as well using the tab function. Say your boss says, hey, I don't like that there. I actually, I want your table of contents at the end. So <laughs> what, uh, what you can do is very simple. I want all of this section before. So go to paragraph, I'm taking this, I'm moving it. And let's put you before the TOC. Um, control enter, you get your own page. And oh no, my table of contents, I just did it. Uh, all you do is right click, so I'm right clicking right now. Come here, yeah, there we go. Come here. I, so, sorry, I left clicked on it. Update table. Um, update, you can have the choice of whether you want to update the page numbers or entire table. Since we moved a section, I'm updating the entire table. Oh, beautiful. Table of contents is moved. Everything's on the appropriate page. Simple, one click. You can also do this once you have figures and tables in your document. We're going to talk about this section later because it gets its own section. But you can do the same thing with a table of tables and a table of figures. And it should be, yeah, insert table of figures is up here, and you can create a table of tables just the same way. One click, easy, updated, you're done. So let's go back to video two. And yeah, now we're done video two. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please tune in for the next one.